Now, I'm not quite sure when the functionality that I'm covering in this video came into existence, but once you see it, it will make you question if you really understand Excel at all. It's so simple, yet it's mind blowing. So if you're ready, let's get started. On the left, we have our example data. And let's suggest we want to provide flexibility around the calculation to perform. It could be sum, it could be average, it could be max and so on. Now the functionality to do this has existed for as long as I can remember. In cell G10, I'll type equals subtotal opening bracket. And this brings up a list of calculations that we can perform. One is average, four is max, nine is sum and so on. Now, rather than entering a number, we can choose a cell. I've already got a number in F10, so I will select that. Then I can choose the range we want to calculate over, which is C4 to C11. Then we can close the bracket and calculate, and that gives us a sum of that range. If we change F10 to one, we get an average. If we change it to four, we get the max. So that gives us the flexibility to choose the calculation we want to perform on the range, but we're not finished because we can also be flexible about the range itself. There are various functions which, if given a range as an argument, will return a range. Common examples are index, offset, xlookup, take and drop. This means that rather than selecting a range, we can generate that range dynamically using functions. In this example, let's use xlookup. We will edit the formula, and rather than C4 to C11, we are going to enter xlookup opening bracket. We want to look up the value in F5 from the range from B4 to B11, and then we want to return the cell address from C4 to C11. Now, I purposefully said cell address rather than value because this function doesn't return 88, it returns the cell reference to C6. Then, just like any other cell reference, we can enter a colon to join two cells together into a range. Then we're going to use another X lookup, and we want to look up the value in F6 from the range B4 to B11, and again, we want to return the cell address from C4 to C11. Just as before, this doesn't return 52, it returns the cell address of C8, which means we have dynamically calculated the range of C6 to C8. When it calculates, everything works. When we change the start value to Bravo and the end value to Delta, as we do so, the range changes and the calculation updates for each new range. This means we've now got a dynamic range and a dynamic function, but we're not finished yet because as great as subtotal is, it's missing some important calculations such as median and mode. However, these options are available inside the aggregate function. In cell G12, I'll type equals aggregate opening bracket. It has a similar list of functions to subtotal, but it also includes a few additional functions such as median and mode. We're going to use cell F12 to determine which function we select. The next argument of aggregate provides even more options to ignore errors and hidden rows and even more. Let's suggest in this scenario that we don't want to ignore anything. So we are going to enter four. The next argument of array is the range of cells that we want to perform our calculation on. Initially, we're just going to select cells C4 to C11. That calculates the sum of all of those cells. If we change F12 to four, we now get the max value of those cells. So it operates in the same way as subtotal. As mentioned before, Aggregate has a few other options. So if we enter 12, that will now calculate the median value from that range. Just as we saw before with subtotal, we could create a dynamic range. So let's go into cell G10. We're going to copy our X lookup section. Then we'll come back into G12 and we're going to replace our range with that dynamic calculation. 
So now we have aggregate that provides more options than subtotal, and we're still able to perform our dynamic range calculation. But we're still not finished yet. There are loads more calculations we could perform with a single range that aren't included in subtotal or aggregate. Now this is the mind blowing part. In modern versions of Excel, we can use functions as values, which opens up a whole new world of calculation that you've probably not considered before. In cell G14, we're going to enter equals switch opening bracket. If you've not heard of it before, switch is often used to avoid nested if functions. So we're going to look at cell F14, and then we're going to enter a list of paired options. So if F14 equals sum, and that is in double quotes because it's text, we want to return the sum function. That is not in double quotes because it is a function. Also, let's check if F14 equals average. That's also in double quotes. If it is, we want to return the average function, and that's not in double quotes. And we could keep adding more functions, such as min, max, median, and so on. But for now, let's just stick with those two options. When we close that and calculate, we get the hash calc error. That's because we've not provided the arguments for that function. We need to provide a range for that function to calculate over. So I'll go into cell G12. I'm going to copy the X lookup section we created earlier. Then I will return back to cell G14. The switch function is returning the function. We know that after any function, we need to enter an opening bracket and provide the arguments. So I'm going to enter an opening bracket. I'll then paste the X lookups and close the bracket. When that calculates, it now returns the sum of our dynamic range. If we change F14 to average, it now calculates the average of that range. In terms of naming, I've simply used the function name in double quotes, but as a lookup value, it really could be any term that you wish. Now this technique opens up the ability to use any function that accepts a single argument. So let's go and try this with the array to text function. I will edit the formula and we're going to add another element called array to text and that is in double quotes. And then we want to return the function array to text. We can commit that and then we can go into F14 and change the text to array to text. And when that calculates, it works. It now gives us a list of those values which exist in our dynamic range. Now, what about functions that return arrays? Let's edit our formula again. We're going to add another element of sort that is in double quotes. And then the function we want to return is the sort function. We can commit that. Now let's change the value in F14 to sort and it works. We now get an array of values. How about a function that accepts a single value? Let's edit our formula once again. We're going to add SQRT, which is the square root function. That will be in double quotes. And then the function we want to return is the SQRT or the square root function. We can commit that and let's change cell F14 to SQRT and it works. The values calculate and spill for each item in the range. And that is it. That is how we can have complete flexibility over ranges and functions. Now, if you've learned something new from this video, then why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. And then once you've done that, why not check out that video next? It's another one that's going to blow your mind. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.